Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I will show you how to model a CDI, a course deflection indicator and I will uh, be modeling the course deflection indicator for the Cessna 310A we have right here. It's still in the early stages of development. I am developing it together with Chat3006 on a flyer forum and Eyes of Flying. And uh, yeah, it's already a great aircraft. It's going to be even more, uh, even greater when it's called a CDI. So let's get right into it. So I already have modeled a radio right here, the Garmin Navcom 255A. But I mean, what's the use of navigation radio without a course deflection indicator, right? Uh, so let's add that. So I will quit flight gear for now. Because we won't be using that, that in a while. And then I will be going into the uh, illustrated parts catalog of the Cessna 310 and find the section for of the instrument panel right here all right uh, apparently we have no uh, direct image here but uh, the point of the whole uh, illustrated parts catalog thing is that here you get a part number which you can then search up on the internet that way you can find uh, the, uh, the exact instrument that was built into the aircraft when it left the factory which is quite nice because that way you can make a model that is like the one that came from the factory while uh, nowadays most panels are not in the original state but upgraded with modern avionics maybe even glass panels and so on uh so we're, we're in many great matches right here um but there's a great side that often comes up with something called WB parts uh, so we can just paste it right here in the search box let's enter hopefully it comes up with something well, that's not the case uh, this instrument doesn't seem to be to exist so I'll just use the name now All right, so that's already better, and so we can start modeling right now. So I'll close the uh, the stretch parts catalog and fire up Blender, which I always use for any 3D modeling. We click channel. I'll just uh, remove everything. Need no camera or lamp here. And now I'll add a mesh, a circle mesh. Rotate that on the Y axis. Oh no. Right down here. To make it upright. Fill type set to end gone. And revert is to 360 so that each uh, arc segment right here is. Uh, 10 degrees wide which makes it easier for uh, modeling and especially texturing later on and then and for radios uh, I need to know what type of instrument it is there are three main sizes big medium and small with big and medium being the most common and the course indicator is a big instrument with has uh, eight centimeters rounded in diameter and in inches that would be three three inches and an eight an eighth big instrument and 
a smaller type is two and a quarter inch and a very small ones which are not very common uh, they are one and a quarter inch in diameter alright so we have three and an eighth of an inch which is 7.9375 centimeters and we, um, we can just round that to 8 centimeters to make things easier 8 centimeters, here we go zoom in and we can start modeling from that so first thing is uh, I'll offset that inside inset a little bit uh, this is the edge you can see right here in this case it's well I guess two millimeters wide so let's put that in here next step is to no actually this is wider no that's the I don't know. Oh, here, here we have a clear edge, and this distance right here is the distance between the outer edge and the glass sheet. So uh, I guess that's about half a centimeter. So we're gonna extrude that five millimeters. Why is five millimeters? Hmm. Isn't that a little flat? I think. Oh yeah, <laughs> actually the rate it was the radius eight centimeters, but diameters eight centimeters. <laughs> I put that as radius. No, uh, zero point zero eight meters. Here we go. Uh, let's just redo this. Alright, 0 0.08, apply scale, and now do the inset, 2 millimeters, extrude, minus 5 millimeters, like that, that's nice. Now let's duplicate the face. That's going to be our glass. Detach that. Separate selection. Alright, so that is going to be our glass. Name it. We can hide that for now. Continue with the back face of this. Or extrude that another, I don't know, 5 millimeters. Let's get rid of this edge right here. It's not needed. Dissolve edges. Now, you see these hard edges. We don't want these, so we are going to do shade smooth in the object menu. Then, here on the side panel, we will go to object data properties. Uh, Turn this out, normals, and check auto smooth, which is going to give me a nice smoothed curve right here, but preserve these hard edges where we want them. Uh, we still have an unapplied rotation. Let's get rid of that. Alright, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> Saving is important <laughs> in case our uh, computer shuts down which I'd normally do first thing before uh, modeling anything, but <laughs> it was time I forgot. Let's put this into models, interior, panel, instruments, create a new director for it, CDI, and save. Yeah. CDI.blend, save blender from. So that's save.
Now let's go back to the gloss right here. Let's switch to material. Alright, so here we are back in Blender. For uh, some reason, my AMD GPU didn't like Blender to use the EV uh, rendering engine. And it just crashed on me multiple times in a row. And it took me quite some time to figure it out. And a simple solution was to just switch from EV render engine to the Cycles render engine. Uh, so let's re reload the CDI file. Alright, and continue where it <laughs> crashed. <laughs> Alright, so we can finally add that material right here. I'm gonna name it Glass Material. And I'm going to give it a light blue color. Uh, like that, maybe. Here we go. Right there. Uh, and now let's make it transparent. Down here, alpha, 0 0.1, and to actually see that we have to go even further down. And here in the viewport display we can select the blend mode which needs to be set to alpha blend. And we need to select material view to be able to actually see the material. Here you can see, we can nicely see through the glass. So that bit is done. Uh, so let's hide it again. Now let's name this rest here something like a face. Go back here to the photo. And right here we have uh, the scale, which is set a little behind the glass. I'd say another five millimeters because it's got to be moving and there is this needle right here in between. But let's maybe make it like three millimeters. So we'll tap into edit mode and let's advance that to 0 0.08 0 0.008 meters which are minus eight millimeters you can see that right? um, then we have another cutout right here for the chorus and glide slope deflection needles now we have to guess a little bit how how thick this is right here which is always a bit hard to tell uh, I would say, uh, pfft, I don't know, maybe, uh, you know, we have 8 centimeters here, so that's a 4, and that's a 2, so far we have cut out 2 millimeters, so let's make a circle right here, maybe, I don't know, yeah, just, uh, Inset it a further 1.6 centimeters, maybe. Now let's inset this. Yeah. Oh, shut up! That was an air dryer <laughs> beeping because its container is full. <laughs> yeah, you actually got featured in my video now. The point zero one. 6, 0.016 meters, 0.6 centimeters. Mm, I'd say make it 1.8 centimeters. Like that. Yeah, I think that's quite good. Now we need to uh, remove this since it's a cutout. Select these edge 
this edge right here, this edge loop by pressing Alt and clicking on it. And we extrude that behind it. Which could it be? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. I guess just some, some more 5 millimeters. 5 millimeters. And then we're gonna make it a face. So that's closed again. And just to and to make uh, texturing easier, we will copy this cut out to the face back here. So we'll extrude that right through the face and select the face loop. And go to Face intersect knife. Now we can remove the face loop, and we have this nicely cut out right here. This side as well. All right, that's nice. Now, just to be sure, we didn't create any duplicate vertices. We will do a vertex drawn by distance. The distance here is quite good. Uh, that turns out nothing. So, yeah, this is ready to go, right? Uh, no, actually, not quite yet. We need to, one, check the normals face orientation right here. As you can see, uh, we have quite a mess. So let's tap back into edit mode and first put them all to one side which isn't working properly right here. Shut up, okay? So I need to do this manually. That's quite nice. Now, just in case the instrument uh, is sticking out a little in the instrument panel, we'll add the outer hull as well. By selecting these, this edge loop right here. And extruding it. Oops. <laughs> no. X, Y, Z mode have fern just extruded along the X axis. You'll want to extrude it uh, far enough so that it encloses all of the interior and then make uh, like that exact. Like that. And close it with a face. And you'll want to have these normals pointing outwards. So ideally, when the instrument is finished, you will have only blue when you turn on face orientation in the viewport overlay options right here. Can turn it back off. Let's check that the glass has got its face orientation right, which is a case, so everything's good. Hide that glass again. And now we will separate the outer case by selecting the edge loop right here and the back face here. Press P and then separate by selection. Click this and fix the normals. Mark sharp. We can mark sharp then select shade smooth and that's going to preserve this sharp edge right here even though auto smooth isn't working. Oh. <laughs> like that. You still need to enable it. It's some kind of working but uh, for some reason it won't let me set a angle limit right here. Okay, so let's name the case case. Face is face. And 
we need to detach this face right here because I think this is going to rotate right because else we will need this needle or is is a needle going to rotate that's a co good question I mean are all set to zero is set or is it set to zero Oh yeah, so, okay, so the, the scale right here is fixed, and the needles rotate. So we have one here and one here, and that's what rotates when you set the course here with the knob. It's not the face rotating, but the needle <laughs> so right here, which is, uh, I think, a quite unusual design. But okay, uh, so let's select this face ring right here and separate that and name that scale a plot no, no. Uh, set the origin to the geometry so that it's showing up correctly do the same with the glass How to make the needles. Uh, so this needle is like one, two, three, four. I uh, got say five degrees wide on the arc. So what we'll do is to get this quite easily is to take this face right here which has an arc width of 10 degrees because we chose 36 vertices for the ring right here at the beginning uh, duplicate that separate it rotate it by 5 degrees by the origin which Okay, we can just uh, use the 3D cursor right here. So rotate this around the x-axis by 5 degrees. Going to bring it horizontally. Now we can scale it to the half. 0 0.5. Now we will move it up a little bit uh, and snap it to the vertex right here. So I'll select vertex here. Move it only on the Z axis. Oh, well, uh, forgot to enable snapping. Like that. Now we need this vertex right here, we'll snap the cursor to it cursor to select it get back to the needle just gonna needle, name it needle right here now we can rotate around the cursor and around the y axis and here we go got our needle just in the right dimensions, in the right place. What we need to do is, oops, it's tiresome. Uh, all we need to do is to move these a bit up. I mean, that's not how a heel looks, right? This edge, like that. Isn't our needle a bit small? <laughs> Maybe not. Set that to 0 0.05. Huh. It's tricky. Well, I think it's good. And merge it center. And that gets us a pointy tip right there. Clear sharp. Don't need that. And here we go. That's the top half of the course 
indication needle. No, the radial needle. Mm, we need to make the lower half. Mm, for that, we can just duplicate the top one. Rotate it around the x axis by around 80 degrees. Apply rotation. Tap into edit. And what we're gonna do is we're going to keep only the lower edge, delete those two. Select this one and extrude it. First we need to scale it because the lower portion had a stem right here. So we scaled it. And we'll extrude it upwards. Mm, it's pretty much a square right there. 1.6 should do it. Let's go 1.7. Snap the cursor to the square. The geometry at a circle. That's great. Maybe <laughs> okay. And now let's move this up like that. Does look a bit weird. <laughs> Quite the right size, I'd say. Mm, quite good. What is down here? So, let's zoom in a bit further. Uh, let's put these two together. Now we will select these two edges, subdivide once, and snap this vertex to this one. Vertex to this one, delete this one. Now we can just uh, merge by distance. And here we go. That's the bottom half of our needle. And since these the two are essentially one needle moving together, we can just join them. Control J. And that's our radial needle. Just like that. Um, we'll give this material, black one for now, zero, this one too, scale material, black color, And a face material black color and a case it's going to get a case material also black and on a case I always put specular curry zero to just make it appear completely black just like that uh, and now the needle We'll get a n radial needle material. Uh, I will put everything on one texture in the end, but the reason I give them different materials is that the needle is often made from plastic and the case is made from metal and then painted, so it's got a different 
reflectivity and surface structure and roughness when we needle. So it's kind of kind of makes sense to give them different materials even if the settings right here with metallicness are you set to same to the same uh, you can like just go in and change the settings of a needle without uh, affecting the face as well so it's always sensible to make to use different materials for different uh, actually for different actual materials even if they use the same texture. So for the face I'm just going to put a little bit of metallic here as well. Just like that. Oh and one thing on the glass. <laughs> we want to make that really reflective. So let's back a large to one. Metallic to one. And reduce roughness to 0.1, 0 0.1. So it's nice and reflective. Uh, in flight gear it's not as reflective as here, but it's it's also nice. So we've got the radial needle. What we we'll need to do yet are the, the localizer and glide slope deflection needles. Okay, so we'll just add a plane for that not such a big one of course two centimeters maybe zero rotate it front facing oops it's not big enough point four point three point three eight that's quite right I think I know it needs to be point four and then just shift it a bit. Minus two millimeters. Just like that. Well, I guess that's quite good. Now we'll scale it down vertical. Need to apply the rotation first. I can scale it in Z axis to Something like two millimeters. I think one point five millimeters. Yeah, I like that. Now let's move it back a bit. Okay, that's just great. And uh, now we'll duplicate it and just rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, that was the wrong axis. Around the x axis to get the glide slope needle. And we'll move that a bit to the front. You can even see here that the glide slope needle is in front of the localizer needle. For me it's inverted here, so let's fix that. Just like that. Now let's set the origin right. Cursor to selected. And object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. Same thing for this one. Cursor to select it, then object set origin, origin to 3D cursor. So, yeah, now we have oh, this needle right here needs to go back. Uh, 7 millimeters. That looks good. Oh, yeah, here the off flags are still missing in our model, so let's get back here. In here, blender. Um, oh, by the way, this needle is off center. Oh, oops. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Say that. This one. It, uh, 
and it needs to go up two millimeters just like that that's perfect right now these flags um, I know guess should start start off with a simple plane Your front facing, of course. Your point. Let's keep, go for five millimeters, like that. Center. Mm. Just like that. Mm. I think that's already looking pretty good. Apply rotation and scale it something like that oh <laughs> no that was one two just this right here a little bit more hmm is still a bit wide maybe millimeters might be a bit small so I mean, let's see we have four centimeters here two there one like that so this is I'd say three millimeters like that now it looks a bit weird I think I'll go with this. Now we need to add this arm down here. I'll grab that one. And so we will extrude the lower edge here in XYZ mode and just grab it and extrude it. Oh no! Undo and <laughs> snapping off now again. Uh, I don't know, maybe just like that. You can always uh, release it, and and you and you can go down here and adjust the uh, posi position forever. <laughs> Look at your reference images in between and so on. Uh, I put this to. Like that, like that. I think that's great. Now let's duplicate this since we need two of them. Uh, rotate it 90 degrees around the eggs axis, actually, just like that. And now we're going to exchange the Z and Y coordinates to... Oh, that hasn't worked. Ah, minus. Right, so we have it perfectly in place here, and uh, the arm is pointing wrong direction, so we'll scale it vertically. Just put a minus. Oops, uh, I think we should apply the scale and rotation first. Like that. Here we go, that's perfect. Apply scale again. It's always really important to uh, apply scale, uh, uh, rotation, and especially scale, because if you s say uh, uh, have a cube, like that and you scale it one direction and possibly the other two and then you go into edit mode and you want to bevel it and you will end up with this so as you can see instead of making a normal 45 degree 
bezel right here as you'd expect from a cube and makes it like that and I mean it can be useful in some situations where you just have a form like that a shape like that but in some cases it's also most annoying can be most annoying and it just helps to know that in that situations you just need to apply the scale Control A and then scale and then the bevel works as expected right here so just uh, let's get back to the gauge right here so I would say we have everything in place um, this looks a bit weird for I think we should make these arms longer so that you can uh, see where they end when you <laughs> look into inside. So we're just going to move it like that. That's looking good. Let's repeat the same thing for this one. Oops. Like that. That's great. And now let's put the origin into the right place for these arms or fault flags here we go alright let's check the origins and put some correct names so that will be our GS needle this will be our localizer needle. This is our GS off flag. This is our localizer off flag. Right, we've got everything nicely named here. Mm, are we origins in the right place now? That's good. That's good, that's good. And that's good. Alright, so one last thing we need to do here in the modeling mode is we need to add 3D axis objects which will make animating this gauge much simpler because you don't need to uh, find out coordinates for rotating and put them all in the XML file you just uh, specify an axis object name and flag you will calculate the center and orientation of your rotation by itself then so let's do that for that we use a plane um this curse <laughs> annoys me. Uh, curse to world origin. Thanks. Now add plane. A small one like let's say four centimeters. And we'll scale it to zero on the y axis. Apply that scale. Go into edit mode, select all and merge by distance which leaves us with a single two vertex edge that can be used by flight gear for determining the for use as a for use as an axis uh, for objects that rotate around an axis like the x axis for the for the radial needle right here we don't really I mean you can use an axis object but it's doesn't really make much sense in my opinion 
Uh, I only use them when I have off-center objects that have their rotation origin somewhere off the center. So let's move, uh, no, snap this axis right here to the glide slope needle. Snap, selection to active. Now duplicate it. Snap the duplicated axis to the localizer needle. Duplicate that needle again. Snap it to the glide slope off lag. And duplicate it one more time and snap it to the localizer off lag. Just like that. So we have four axis objects right here. You can see them here. Uh, let's name them properly. So this is our localizer needle <laughs> needle needle axis. So my my naming policy is to give the axis the same name as the object it is for with a axis suffix. Here we GS needle axis. And here we uh, GS off flag axis and the localizer off flag axis. Alright, so if our nice that nicely right here. Now let's get into UV mapping this whole thing right here. Thank you. 